Welcome to Alicat Customs, where today I'm going to talk to y'all about lockers. I've got a Jeep sitting on the lift in the shop, and since I had the rear end pulled apart, I figured I would show y'all how a lunchbox style locker works. Uh, I talked to a lot of people about axles, building axles over the years, and some people don't really understand how lockers work until they actually see the parts themselves and understand how, the, how everything functions. So I figured I had to cover off, so I'll show, show y'all the inner workings of the locker. Um, lunchbox style lockers like this, it's a slang term for the um, spider gear replacement style lockers. This axle originally had an open differential, which means it would have side gears and, the, and two gears on the center pin that runs along here, and it's open differential. And anybody that has ever done tried to do a burnout and you have one tire spinning, that's an open differential or a wore out limited slip. Um, this, lock, this is a locker, so anytime that you have throttle applied, a locker will lock both axles together, so you have both tires turning together. So if you're trying to go through off-road obstacles, mud, rocks, or if you're trying to lay, run a straight line on drag strip, or trying to do you know big old smoky burnouts, it's what you're gonna need to run is some kind of locker like this. Um, we put this locker in this Jeep about 16 years ago, um, I rebuilt the axles, put 411 gears in, in the rear end and put a lunchbox style locker in the front air and rear end on this Jeep. So it's really capable. It really runs really well off-road. My dad doesn't really use it off-road for anything other than just riding around the trails out here at his, at his house. So kind of overkill for what he does with it, but you know, he, we had it apart and talked him into running lockers and he enjoys it because he doesn't have to really bash on it, just puts it in four wheel drive when he needs it and rides out. So it's it's fun to have lockers or limited slip. Open differentials are mainly just for people that try to drive back forth to work. So now that you can see inside the differential, you can see that this is a lunchbox style locker. So you're seeing the open carrier and the inside pieces that you see is you see the two side gears on either side right here and those are splined to your axle shafts. So whenever you turn a wheel and tire, it turns the axle shaft, and I just unlocked this locker right now. So you can see that this wheel and tire, the, I'm spinning the passenger side wheel and tire, and you can see that the side gear's spinning and the rest of the locker is not spinning. The carrier's not spinning the ring gear, and that's, that's how a locker works. Um, you have either it's either locked and both tires are have power or one side is unlocked from the system so it can free spin. Um, lockers are really good when you're trying to have really good straight line power like drag racing or, or any kind of you know racing when you're trying to take off and go straight or off-road when you're trying to go through obstacles, go through deep mud and ruts and stuff like that. You really want both tires turning together for having the power applied and both tires turning together. Um, open differentials or a limited slip, they will, open differentials especially, the power is sent through the path of least resistance. Through the open differential, the way the gears are designed, if you have a tire that starts to spin, the other tire will not be getting any of the power. You're just gonna spin the one tire. So that's why when you see somebody doing a burnout and they spin one tire, that's what it is, they have an open differential. You see somebody off-roading, or the mud riding, or rock crawling or anything, and you see one tire free spin and the other tire sitting still, they, that's either an open differential or a limited slip that they're pushing past the clutches or like on the true track when the, the limited slip isn't engaging tight enough to make both sides spin. So the way the locker works is, is when you apply power, whenever I spin the drive shaft, it spins the pinion, and this pinion will spin the ring gear. So you can see it spin the ring gear back and forth on it. And when it spins the ring gear, that spins the carrier. And the carrier has a center pin that goes through the center part of this locker. And whenever power is applied to, this, to the center pin on the two pieces, it forces the two pieces apart. So when it forces the two pieces apart, it pushes the gears into the side gears and that locks the rear end up. So 
if you're if you've ever been around a truck that has a locker like in a parking lot especially like uh my little c10 i have uh it's it's got you know wide drag raiders on the back and i get in the parking lots and i've actually scared people because when you're trying to turn real sharp in a parking lot the rear end will bind because both tires are trying to spin at the same speed but when you're trying to turn the outside tire wants to spin farther than your inside tire so when it's in a bind it has all this in a bind everything's locked up tight so when you let off the throttle these part the center pieces are allowed to relax and when they re relax and you put the side gears in a bind try to put it in a bind it pushes the center piece the center section in and allows the side gears to move so that's what you hear when you see a truck turning uh, like on my C10 you can actually watch the truck kind of bind up and you hear a loud BANG and the truck will shake and that's what it is it has such a bind in the rear end that it when it finally unlocks it makes a loud BANG and then if you if it's continuing to roll you can actually hear the locker clicking a lot of times you'll hear uh, like going down a road when you're going through a curvy road if you're off the throttle you can hear them clang and bang and make a clicking sound people people often call them a ratcheting locker because that's a it sound like a ratchet when you're free spinning a ratchet but this that's what it is is actually the side gears passing by the center part of the gears on the carrier so the positives of having a locker whether it be a full carrier style locker or a lunchbox style locker like this is is when you're off-road or you're trying to race like on the street or, or on the track or whatever you have both tires are going to get power every time you stab on that throttle you're going to spin both tires the negative of it is on a street style vehicle where you're just trying to drive when you're not really abusing the vehicle you don't need to have both tires locked in and, and trying to go somewhere they have a lot of negative handling effects on the street um, they, they they clang and they bang and they make a racket uh, on a like especially like this Jeep that I'm working on it's a CJ8 scrambler it's a longer wheelbase than like the CJ7 or the CJ5 but it's still fairly short wheelbase as far as vehicles go so the shorter the wheelbase of the vehicle and the lighter the vehicle is the more noticeable the banging and clanging and, and, and ill handling moves are. Uh, if you have like a crew cab, long wheelbase, heavy truck with an automatic, you'll barely even notice that you have a locker. Whereas if you have something like a, a, a Blazer or a CJ7 or a CJ5 or something really short, real lightweight, you'll notice a locker a lot, uh, a lot more and you're going to notice it more especially a stick shift vehicle also will cause lockers to have more of a negative effect because whereas an automatic you won't have on when you're decelerating when you're off the throttle you won't have as much engine compression braking if any to feel to put any kind of input torque to the locker so when you let off the throttle in an automatic equipped vehicle the locker will easily disengage so you can start turning and you won't notice it nearly as, as bad. Uh, if you have a, a manual transmission, when you don't have the clutch pressed in, when you're in gear, what you're doing is when you're on the throttle, you're having power applied to the rear end. When you let off the throttle and it starts to compression brake and it slow the vehicle down, well, that's also applying power to the locker. So it still forces the side gears apart. So if you have like like this Jeep, it's, it's got a five speed in it. So when you go into a curve, uh, I've done it showing different people about lockers. When you go into a curve and you let off the throttle, you can actually feel the locker unlock and then the Jeep will start to turn real easy like it's supposed to. And then all of a sudden it'll get the power from the deceleration and the locker will lock and cause the vehicle to actually swerve. So it, it, you'll, you'll see it swerving in a, in a curve. Whereas if you go to set up in the same exact curve, going the same speed, but you press the clutch, the locker will unlock real easy and the vehicle will turn and, and it'll be a more smooth operation. You come out of the curve and you let off the clutch and you can actually feel 
if you're still in the curve and still have the vehicle turning, if you let off the clutch, you can actually feel the locker engage and it can throw the vehicle back straight. So if people don't like the handling characteristics, that's, that's really the negatives of a locker. But for somebody like me, I just like to put the power down and that hammer on it. I'm gonna run a locker and I'll deal with it. A little bit of extra tire wear, it's not really that important because I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn the tires off anyways, just I like to have fun. So that's about, about the, the gist of it as far as lockers go. You just have to replace, like on this, you just replace the spider gears and you can actually do this in your driveway. Uh, working, on, working on it, you can do it in the driveway, throw it up on jack, jack stands and you can have a, have a locked rear end in a matter of a couple hours. Just pull that apart and you won't have to reset the ring of pinion. If you can get the center pin out, sometimes the uh, if you have a ring gear that's real thick on some axle ratios, on some style axles, you can't get the uh, center pin out. So that becomes a pain if you can't get the pin out to, to change it out. So it's things to be mindful of when you're trying to install one of these. But I like them, especially for, like I said earlier, your cheaper guys, the guys that you know don't have a big budget, they just want to lock a rear end and, and have their mud truck, the beer camp truck, or, or their little street strip style truck like I have. Um, I'm running a big block in my C10 and I have a uh, Spartan brand uh, lunchbox locker in it and I've been hammering on it for about a year and I haven't broke it yet. So, I mean, they're not as strong as your full carrier lockers, but they can handle a pretty good bit of abuse and uh, they're, a, they're a lot of fun to have. I'd much rather have the lockers than have an open differential. So, and as you can see, I'll show you I'll show you again, zoom in close, and I'm gonna spin the uh, spin everything and show you all the parts that move and stuff on it. And so, so as you can see, I got I'm holding on to both of the tires, and I'm spinning the tires first. So as I spin the driver side tire, I can unlock the passenger side wheel, and you can see the lockers, the carrier is actually spinning. Now I can spin the right side tire. I get it spinning and you can hear the, uh, you can actually hear the um, side gears clicking. So when you spin it around, that's, that's what you're hearing. A lot of the guys that call it a ratcheting style locker, that's what they're hearing is the side gears clicking past each other. But as soon as you get, you get the locker together and then they're they're turning each other. The reason why it's trying to unlock so easy is because I'm not putting any power in at the uh, pinion, so it's not pushing the two side gears out. So they're really easy to want to push in on each other. So it's easy to easy to unlock it when you're just spinning the tires on a lift. So we got the locator pins right here that they help keep everything squared away and keep the just enough preload on it. To try to try to help the locker out inside. So that's up close. You can hear. Yeah, you can hear the the driver's side. It makes a lot. You actually hear it a lot better. The acoustics are better in here. So as soon as I turn it back, I can lock it together. And this is how it is when you're driving down the street in a straight line. So that's about it as far as lockers go in the rear end. Uh, it's just a different style of differential. Um, it's more for your hardcore guys. Uh, your lunchbox locker is more for the, the budget-minded um, hard, hardcore style guys, but your, your guys that don't really um, push your vehicle very hard, a locker may not be for you. Uh, I, I don't recommend a locker for anybody that doesn't like to hammer on it. So I, I've installed limited slips in, in uh, different vehicles as, as well as went back with open differentials. It's for different applications. So mainly the different applications are, your open differentials are mainly for, you know, folks who just have a stock vehicle. Your limited slips are for people that want to want to try to spin both tires. A lot of your guys that run a, a really, they're 90% street, driving back and forth to work, driving around town, and they don't want all the, the clanging and the banging that lockers have. That's, that's really where a limited slip does well. 
Now, they're called a limited slip, and I always tell folks they're a limited slip, which means they are very limited in what they can do. Now, you really push on one. Uh, once you ever get the clutches to slip, you are going to spin one tire. And if you ever look and see one tire spinning, you better get off of it because that's not good on a limited slip at all. Uh, if you're off-roading and stuff, you can put too much pressure against the clutches inside and cause a limited slip to start slipping, and then you're stuck. You're just as stuck as you was with an open differential. So it really depends on what you're willing to do, what you're willing to put up with, um, as far as what you want for a, a differential. So if you're a hardcore guy and you wanna, wanna get out, really bash on it, really hit the hard trails and rock crawl and mud ride and mud bogging, and you know, you're a street strip style guy and you just would rather put up with the clanging and banging and the ill handling of a locker, and you don't wanna deal with the possibility of a limited slip only spinning one tire, which, I mean, on something like a drag race or something, it's not as easy that you're gonna just spin one tire, but the possibility is there, so. I kinda of shy away from limited slips. I, I just, I'd rather run a locker. But to each his own, some folks don't wanna put up with it. Me, I just, I just deal with it, so. So that about wraps it up for the differential talk here. Um, hopefully if you had any questions about how a locker operates, you was able to see in this video how, how a, a locker works. And uh, hopefully if you, if you had any questions or was trying to decide in your own truck or car, if you was wanting to run a locker or a limited slip or, or just run an open differential, hopefully I was able to help steer you in the right direction of, of what you wanted. Um, my, my last thing is mainly if, if you are wanting, if you're curious about what you want to run, weigh the options. If you want to run a locker or if you don't know if you want to run a locker or a limited slip or an open differential, weigh the options out. Can you deal with the ill handling of the locker where the clanging and banging and, and trying to steer the vehicle back straight in a turn? Or if you can't deal with that, can you deal with the possibility of a limited slip actually slipping and causing you to get stuck? Or if you don't want to deal with all of those and you want to run the cheapest option, which is just an open differential, then you know that's, that's a good thing too. I've installed many open differentials and people that just wanted to run, have a car go up down the road, open differential is the best option you can have. So, so as far as, that's about all I can, all I can help with you right now on these axles. I don't have a limited slip or a uh, open differential to show y'all, but when I get more axles in, if I have an open differential, I'll show you the insides of it or a limited slip. So I get different axles in, I'm gonna pull them down and show you all the differences and hopefully y'all have enjoyed this video and hopefully I've maybe helped somebody out or or at least entertain you with watching the uh, locker spinning in here. So y'all have fun and keep working on them in the shop.